Hello, Marion. Hello, Penny. Oh, look at all those cats. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, look, we're, ma we're matching in stripes, Marion. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes whilst uh, a few more people join. I've got uh, quite a few people that I know are catching it on replay that have got in touch today. Um, uh, but I do like to just give it a few more minutes in case a few more people will, will join us live. Hi, Kay. I love the fact that Penny, like, there's, there's no human to be seen. There's just uh, a load of gorgeous looking pussy cats. <laughs> That's brilliant. Okay. Hi, Amanda. I'm just closing my computer stuff down. So it's quite an informal session, uh, ladies. So, um, you know, if you want to get yourself a drink or be eating your lunch whilst we're chatting, it's absolutely fine. You're more than welcome to do so. I'm just going to give it a little bit longer. Let's see if anyone else has got in touch. Okay. So, oops. Oh, no. We lost K. Okay. So super excited for this one today. So let me know in the chat currently where you are in the world, where you're joining us from and uh, how you found out about Naturally Cats. So let me know whether you uh, came across us on Instagram or um, uh, on social media. Let me know where you are in the world. So we're in gorgeous Plymouth in the southwest in the UK and uh, it's beautifully sunny today. Leo is not a fan of the heat though. Amanda's in Twickenham, lovely. Found you through your book, awesome. Hope you'll come in and joining us for the one next week, Amanda, uh, top 10 remedies. Yeah, Leo uh, isn't a fan of the heat. He uh, He's underneath the blanket in the spare room <laughs> currently. Would you think it'd be a bit crazy being under a blanket in this weather? But uh, yeah, he um, it's quite shaded in there. It's quite cool. Hi, Leslie. So uh, yeah, he's uh, taking some time out. He'll probably try and go out a bit later when it's uh, a bit cooler. Marion says, I'm in the Midlands. I think I found you through Instagram a while ago. Awesome. Cool. So Penny, I don't know if you're here or whether you've just let us lift, left us with the gorgeous cat backdrop. Um, let me know if you're there or not. I'm just gonna give it one more minute uh, before I start. Ah, Penny is there, lovely. <laughs> awesome thumbs up. Um, the cat backdrop is beautiful. <laughs> and if anyone has got any cats with them, please feel free to turn your cameras around or uh, uh, to shift no Leslie says no and obviously Kay I can see you're at work my love so you don't have any gorgeous Georgie with you any either do you no gutted I would move the webcam and show you Leo in the spare room but to be honest I'll probably end up messing up the tech so it's not a good idea <laughs> okay what time are we on brilliant okay I'm gonna get started and uh, you might see people come and go as we get through the talk but um there's a lot to cover today and uh, I don't want to uh, run over. So welcome everyone. Thank you to those that are joining me live and thank you to everybody who's catching it on replay. This has been the most popular lunch and learn so far with the number of people that we've had sign up. So uh, I'm really glad that you've um, that you've come to join me, whether you're here with me in the moment or you're watching this later on. I really hope you find it useful and I trust that everyone will take what they need to from this session. So today we're talking about raw feeding. Now, um, what I must say is, you know, as a disclaimer, after the very, very start, you know, I am not a cat nutritionist. I am not a veterinary professional. You know, I am a cat mum who has had to do a lot of research because I've had very poorly cats, an asthmatic one, a diabetic one. So, you know, I've had to do my research to find out how I can help them with their medical conditions. And, you know, there's nothing like um, a cat mum on a mission to, you know, take time to look at information and to learn what they can to help their cats. So 
I just want to put that there, you know, from the bat. So if I say something and you've had something different, you know, let's let's communicate in the chat. Let me know if you think, oh, I thought it was this or I thought it was that. Let's chat about it. That's the whole point of these lunch and learn sessions. You know, it's about sharing information and not just me talking to you. But, you know, I'm always open to learning. So I'm going to share with you my experience, my understanding, my perspective. And like I said, I trust that you will take what you need from it. And the last thing that I wanted to say before I kick us off is that raw feeding, you know, it's very much being turned into a science. It's very much being turned into, uh, it's like astrology. You know, you can always learn more. And, and, you know, there are different perspectives and there are different takes. Um, but what I would say is, you know, you know what's best for your cat and trust that you are doing the best that you can. So there's always new products on the market. There's always new ways to do things. But if you've got something that works for you, I would say stick with it. Don't change just for the sake of it because you've heard something different. Um, and trust your intuition, as I would say with everything and, and everybody that I work with, you know, your intuition won't steer you wrong. So why do we feed? Why do I feed a raw food diet? I feed raw food because it's a species appropriate diet. So uh, cats are obligate carnivores, which means that they need to get their nutrition from animal flesh. You know, this isn't a session about kibble bashing and, you know, uh, uh, to talk to you about ditching the dry food. What I would say is, you know, I will come on to transitions in just a minute, but have a think about, you know, what I, what I always try to relate this is back to cats you know, animals in the wild, whether that's feral cats or whether that's, you know, lions and tigers, you know, big cats, have a think about what they're eating. You know, you don't see lions uh, going into a field of corn and, and munching down, you know, they, they eat the, the flesh, the bones, they eat everything, every part of the antelope, or if that's not the right species, but you know what I mean. They eat every part of the animal. So yes, our cats, in some people's opinion, have evolved to eat carbohydrates. Generally speaking, that's a forced evolution. That's not a natural, in terms of like natural selection, that's not a natural evolution. Man created dry food. Man created kibble, processed, uh, dehydrated food for convenience. You know, if we think about cats, you know, in Victorian times, let alone the Egyptians, you know, cats were mouses. Cats were brought in to kill rodents, to maintain the rodent population. And they didn't just pop them on the head and kill them, they would eat them, you know? And it's not been that long that dry food's been around, you know? So evolution takes a while. So as much as there is an opinion that cats are evolving to tolerate more carbohydrates, I would disagree with that. And I would also say that when a cat can tolerate carbohydrates, it's usually, part, it's usually partially digested in the stomach of their prey. So let's use the analogy of the cat with the mouse. You know, when I, when I took a retreat um, earlier this year, you know, I saw a gorgeous cat. She was domesticated in a way that she was living with a family, but she would, she, in, in that moment with me, she caught a mouse and I, I watched her eat it. It was profound, it was a little bit gross, but it was one of those moments that changed my life. I heard a crunch on the head. I heard her, you know, munch it all up and she left nothing but a little lung and a kidney. That was it. The whole lot was gone. The tail, the ears, the head, everything. So, you know, it's a species appropriate diet and they are biologically made to digest protein and bones. They have a very um, acidic stomach, you know, the pH of their stomach, so they can digest it all. It's not new. What they don't have is the capacity to process things like cereals. They lack, um, oh, I can't think what the enzyme is. Damn it. There's an enzyme that they, you know, they, they don't process carbs very well. They don't process cereals. Amylase comes to mind, but I don't think it's that one. Um, so the carbohydrates that they would come into contact with would be grains and cereals, you know, from what the mouse had eaten, but it's not going to be a whole, you know, a whole seed, for example, it's going to be partly digested in the mouse's tummy. So in my opinion, cats are not biologically made to process carbohydrates. 
This is partly seen with the epidemic we've got of overweight cats who were fed dry food and diabetic cats. Now, when Pickle was diagnosed with diabetic, I, my world came crashing down around me. We were free feeding dry food because that's what I thought was the best thing to do for her. That's how I showed her love to give her access to food all the time. And she was underweight when we got her. Um, and then I realized that because dry food is very heavily processed, and not only is it covered with chemicals to make it palatable to cats, to make it smell nice to cats, because cats use their sense of smell uh, to um, know if their food's edible and to sort of, you know, encourage them to eat. It, it was so full of carbohydrates that was making her insulin levels very, very unstable. So that's where my journey into raw food began because I wanted to maintain her diabetes. I actually wanted to get her off insulin, which we managed a couple of times, but not consistently. And I learned about the fact that, you know, when she was eating dry food, it was spiking her sugar levels. And that's why we couldn't make her stable. So there's a couple of reasons there, you know, it's not a species, uh, dry food isn't a species appropriate diet. They lack enzymes in the body to physically break down the carbohydrates and it can affect them physiologically speaking in terms of their insulin levels. Um, so we feed raw, we feed Leo 100% raw. Um, pickle, we couldn't get her 100% raw. We tried a couple of times, but due to other digestive complications that she had with her colon, it wasn't great for her. Now, one thing that I want to share today is that, you know, raw food isn't for everyone. Now, I mean that in terms of the humans, not every human can cope with, with, with raw food. That's absolutely fine. You know, I'm a vegan and I can do it for Leo because I've almost disassociated what's what's going on. And, and ultimately, it's the best thing that he needs. And that's what my duty is to provide for him. But it's not for everyone. So if you if raw food's not for you, feed the best quality wet food that you can. You know, learn how to read the labels, check you've got something with a really high protein content and feed the best you can. But if raw food is for you or you're interested, great. You know, we had pickle on half wet and half raw. That's the best that she could tolerate. So not only do you need to think about it from your perspective as a human, can you handle it? And not as in like, can you cope with it? I mean, you know, literally, can you handle it when you're opening the packets and stuff with what it looks like? Um, but also, is it the right thing for your cat? So um, let's talk about transition. I would always transition a cat from dry to wet and wet to raw. It's very rare, in my opinion, that I've had a cat that will transition from dry food to raw food. If you think about it in terms of consistency, it's very, very different. In terms of smell, very, very different. And obviously, like flavor, very, very different. Now, cats are neophobic. They don't like change. So, you know, it's like you're going from, you know, really nice, crunchy sweets to like, you know, a diet full of broccoli, for example, you know it's not going to be that easy to transition or to change them over. So I would always advocate going from dry to wet, wet to raw. And Dr. Nick Thompson, who is one of the co-founders of the Royal, um, uh, the Royal Feeding Veterinary Society, RFVS, he says that in order to transition a cat, you need to be like a poisoner, <laughs> which when I first heard that, I was like, oh my God, what is he saying? I see Leslie laughing, you know it, right? And, uh, He's absolutely right. So basically, if you were going to poison your partner or your husband or your friend, God forbid, you know, you're not just going to like dump the whole bottle of poison into their food because they'll taste it. They'll notice the difference and they won't have any of it. But if you slowly add, you know, half a teaspoon or, or less and you do it slowly over time. So you need to be sneaky, basically. Now, cats, as we said, don't like change. And when it comes to food, they can be very, very resistant. I have had so many clients, and, and in fact, people contact me on social media to say to me, and I, I've seen it in many, many Facebook posts in the cat groups that I'm in. Um, and people have said, you know, I, I tried to, to, to get my cat into wet food or whatever, and it didn't work. Now, I'll be realistic and I'll be honest with you, it took us uh, over three months to get Leo onto Raw, and we had to do it twice. You know, it's not a one trick pony. It's not a one time event. Some cats, you put a raw, a bowl of raw food down and they'll munch it straight away. You know, you've got angels singing. Oh, you know, it's a wonderful moment in life. But you might find that actually later on, I don't know, a couple of days, a week later, they won't go near it. So some cats will be the exception to the rule. 
But what I would say is, you know, go super slow. And let's talk about um, uh, dry to wet. So, which is slightly off topic, but bear with me. Um, never ever add food to dry food, wet food, raw food, never mix it in the same bowl. The reason I say that is because because of the way that the dry food is created, it's heavily processed with a lot of chemicals. It's a breeding ground for bacteria. So as soon as you add any water or any moisture to the dry food, basically you're, you're kind of feeding that bacteria. Um, if you get to a point where you're trying to transition your cat and you need to mix it in, what I would say is, is mix it and do not leave it down for more than half an hour before you put it in the bin. You know, one of the realizations to make when you're transitioning your cat from dry to wet to raw is that you're going to waste a bit of food. That's that's fact. That's a given. And you've got to just accept that because you can't force your cat to eat. You need to go at their pace and you need to do it slowly. So hopefully it won't be too much, but just bear in mind, you will probably waste a little bit of food. So what I would always start with is something called the two plate method. I don't know what's happening on Penny's screen, either we're about to see a cat or like there's a pillow that's sort of like slowly coming down over her camera. I don't know what that is, but that looks, oh, <laughs> I thought it was, we were gonna see a cat then, but no. Um, <laughs> sorry, everyone. I was just, it just really slowly <laughs> came down. Um, so I would start with a two plate method. So basically you've got your plate of dry food, your plate of wet food and you put them literally next to each other. Now that in itself will unsettle some cats. So just keep doing it. And I'm talking like a week, you know, and you might have to keep binning this wet food because they may not go near it, but just persevere. And this is the same going from wet to raw as well. So two plate method next to each other, consistent. You need to be consistent. So don't just do it once a day for one meal, do it every meal, every day. What you're doing is you're almost in terms of like behavior um, modification speak, we're desensitizing the cat. You're working with them on their, almost like their change curve. You know, you know, we go through different stages when you're going through change. What you're doing is starting off really slow and saying to them, look, it's okay. It's okay to eat your normal food. They might sniff at it. Hell, they might even lick it, even if they go towards it and then carry on eating. What you're doing is saying to them, this, this is okay, the second plate not going to hurt you it's not going to harm you it's not going to attack you and that may seem crazy but you know cats are a predator and prey animal so they are always assessing their environment for threats and what they're doing with this potential new food they're assessing it for a threat so by putting it down for every meal for every day for like a, for like a week you know you are saying to them it's okay you're not going to be harmed which is exactly what we need to do when we're supporting cats with a change of behavior okay so then what you need to do, so you've had it down with them, two plate method, like I said, you might see them sniff, flick, or go near it, which is great. If you get the opportunity and you observe it, gives them lots of positive reinforcement, pro pro properly verbal, try not to stroke them whilst they're eating because some cats will be very sensitive to that. Um, and then you start to mix the food. So basically, like I said, I know I mentioned not putting it in with dry, but by that, I mean, don't mix it in with dry and leave it down for, for three or four hours, okay? Um, if you can avoid it, I would try not to mix it in with dry, put it on the plate or on the bowl, but have them separate. It really is dependent on your cat. It depends how change averse they are. So when we're looking at transitioning with wet to raw, um, I'm talking like half a teaspoon and you mix it in with the wet. Now you might find again that the cat will eat all the rest of the wet and leave the raw. That's absolutely fine absolutely fine you've got to remember this is a long game that we're playing it's not going to happen overnight don't force them do not push their head into it which i have had heard people do just be patient be patient so you might need to do a teaspoon for a month it might be a week i can't give you a time scale but basically you slowly increase it. The general rule is that, you know, you increase one, you decrease the other and you sort of transition them over. Now, what we need to remember whilst we're doing this is that, like I said, cats are risk averse, uh, are change averse, they don't like change. It's going to take a while to adjust. Also, we need to think about the fact that physiologically, 
they are going to be making changes. So their stomach pH will change, their gut biome will change. So again, this isn't something to rush because if you think about going from eating McDonald's every day, three meals a day, to eating salads every day, three meals a day, your body, your intestine, your gut flora and, 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 and uh, uh, insides all need to adjust to that change. More nutrients, you know, more protein, less protein, whatever it may be. So bear in mind that slow is absolutely fine. The slower you go, the more chance you've got of success. So if you set yourself a target for say four months or six months, great. It's not going to happen. In a, it's, it's unlikely to happen in a week. So you're probably going to ditch food. It's going to take a while. And so I bet you're wondering like, why on earth would we bother? <laughs> so like I said, it's a species appropriate diet and your cats will thrive on it. So you're talking, you know, better coat condition, um, better uh, weight control, talking of weight actually be aware that you you know your cat may lose weight it's more likely to be that way whilst you're doing a transition but don't panic so when you're in a stage of transition things change which is what you want to happen right so if you think the cat's losing weight as long as they're eating don't worry so you know wet uh, dry food is coated and covered with cereals and sugars so you know you might have a slightly obese cat Wet food, depending on the brand that you're feeding, can be very poor, nutritionally speaking. If it's got a lot of derivatives rather than actual proteins, excuse me, you're going to have things that aren't very nutritious for the cat. So you might see a change in the body condition or they might lose or um, put on weight. It's unlikely they'll put on, but who knows? You know, every cat is different. But don't worry. This, this is but a snapshot in time, you know, whether it's six months or three months. Hopefully you've got your cat for years. And you know, whilst you're transitioning them, transitioning them over, don't worry too much about getting it right or doing it the right way. There is no right way. It's about doing it at the pace of your cat and what feels right for you. So it's going to take a while. Give them chance to adjust and uh, try not to mix stuff in with dry food. If you do, like I said, really be cautious of your time, 20 minutes, half hour max, and then ditch it. So what do we need to consider when we're feeding raw food? How do you, how do you like start off, right? How do you get moving? Um, I've got a couple of book recommendations, which um, I will put in a follow-up email when you get the recording. Um, sadly, I haven't been able to find a cat specific one. Who knows, maybe I'll have to write one, but it's been very hard to find information about cats and raw food. There are a couple of good websites out there. Uh, catinfo.org is one. Um, now you can either make your own or you can buy pre-made. I buy pre-made. <laughs> I do not have the time or the inclination to be handling, you know, bits of organs and mincing meat and bones. And it, it's just not my bag. If you want to more power to you, go for it, fill your boots. You will have to do a lot more research than what I'm going to provide in this session today, because you will need to look at, um, what you're putting together how you're um, basically like packaging it up for your cat. What I do, I buy pre-made. We buy, we use two brands. We use Perform and we use Nutriment. Those aren't the only brands. I'm going to cover brands in a minute. Um, and basically with raw food, it's, it's basically an 80-10-10 rule. So 80% meat or protein, 10% bone and 10% offal and organs. That's, that's the general rule of thumb. Now remember what I said at the beginning, this is like astrology, you know, you can go into that, even that 80, 10, 10 in another granular level of detail, you know, how much kidney, how much lung, how much liver. I'm not talking about that today. Um, don't overthink it though. Like with humans, right? We're not meant to eat salad every day or steak every day or cake every day. Oh God, can you imagine eating cake every day? Sorry. You know, we, we eat a little and often of what we enjoy. It's all about a balanced diet. And that's exactly the same with raw. Feeding chicken every day or beef every day, not a good idea. You really need to vary your proteins. Now, some cats will cope better with that than others. What we do with Leo, we have four different flavors, if you like, of perform, and we have two different types of nutriment. So in, I'd say, 
probably a two week period based on how we feed him because we alternate between perform and nutriment. I would say Leo probably gets six or seven different proteins in a two week period. That's from the meat, from the food, from the three meals a day that we feed him. He also gets uh, treats, which we talked about in the raw, um, the raw treats lunch and learn. So he gets beef meatballs, tripe meatballs, uh, defrosted and cut up whole um, sprat. And uh, we've also recently introduced venison chunks. So we feed pre-made because it's a mixture and performer and nutriment are both that. They're a mixture of uh, meat, bone and offal. So he gets all of it. Now, how much do you feed? <laughs> this is like the eight old question, eight old question. That really, again, depends. It depends on the age of your cat, any health conditions. It depends on the weight of your cat. It depends on their activity it levels. It depends on their breed. You know, I could go on. What I would say is start with 2% of their body weight or look at what's on the packet. Another reason why we feed a pre-made brand, because they will give you an idea how much you should be feeding. So, for example, Perform, I think it comes in 70 gram pouches that are sadly non-recyclable. Um, and I think it says two pouches a day for Leo's size because he's four kilograms. Don't quote me on that. It's hard to think because we we know what we feed him every day. Um, but if you're looking to transition from uh, dry to wet to raw, don't worry too much about getting it right and feeding the right amount. Your cat will be able to tell you and you might find that, you know, it's a bit of a trial and error. First of all, get them on to raw and then worry about how much you're feeding. You know, if they continuously start to lose weight or they're continuously hungry, give them more. If they're leaving some, give them less. So one thing to remember is that the nutritional value of raw food. Sorry, hang on, bear with me. I just got a comment. Kay says, uh, packets wet food always says more than required it sells more <laughs> indeed and also like I said depending on the wet food that you feed it might not be um very good quality nutritionally speaking um what what you may find is that when you switch to raw food um Leslie agrees that uh the cat won't eat as much because it's higher quality you know it's like if we went to a fancy restaurant oh back in the day you know, and you had a lovely, um, you know, a really rich dinner, you don't need to eat as much because the flavor is is amazing. And, you know, now I'm not talking about flavor for raw food. I'm talking about terms of, um, I can never say this word right, like say, say tea, say tea, tea? that's not right. Like how full they are, basically. Because if you've got a wet food that's meat and animal derivatives, so it's basically, basically like mushed up beaks and bones and hoofs, that's not going to fill the cat up as much as, for example, like, you know, pigeon or a bit of, you know, ground duck breast with a bit of bone. Do you see what I mean? The, the, the nutritional value is, is different. So they're going to feel more full from one than the other when it's more nutritionally dense. Not 100% sure I've articulated that very well, but I hope that you understand what I'm trying to say. Don't worry too much about feeding them what it says in the packet. Just start somewhere. OK, you will find a rhythm with your cat. You will know how much they're eating. Again, no one knows your cat better, better than you. You know, sometimes, I mean, obviously, uh, we're really connected with our cat. Sometimes I can tell Leo's a little bit more hungry, but there's a change in the weather or, you know, he's not feeling great, whatever. We all have days like that. Some days we're more hungry than others. Try to stick to a routine as much as you can. Try to be consistent as much as you can. But don't worry, whilst you're transitioning, there might be variations. Okay, so 8 to 10, 10, start with 2% or as the packet advises. Equally, just, just get them on to whatever brand you want to feed them, you know, get them onto the food. Now, there are some drawbacks when you're getting um, a commercial made product. So, for example, Nutriment, you've got to buy, but you've got to purchase their items by weight. And with, new, uh, with Perform, you've got to buy, I think it's like a minimum, like three boxes. So, you know, you are going to be looking to make an investment if you're buying a pre-made raw. And like I said at the beginning, you need to be patient. So if you're switching your cat from a chicken wet food, try a chicken raw food. 
you know, when I talk about varying the proteins, that's what I mean in terms of varying the proteins when they're on raw food, you know, but if you can do like for like, so if you feed duck flavored Felix, you know, buy duck protein based raw food, you know, have a think about how you can make the transition easy for them. How do you make it almost like for like? So I've talked to you about perform and I've talked to you about nutriment because they're the two that we that we tried, we use. Now we tried Leo on a couple of different nutrients. There's a salmon one. I have to be honest, the texture was gross. The texture was very different to their turkey and rabbit one. And I didn't think he'd eat it and he wasn't keen. We persevered, but he kept leaving the food. Um, and you know, he, he yeah, it was it was really honky, it wasn't very pleasant. So we tried, you know, I think I bought four when we bought the big box. Um and uh, we persevered, but he wasn't keen. And ultimately, you will start to see whether your cat is like a hard no, or whether they're a bit like, mm, yeah, I'm not, I'm not so sure, man, but I'll give it a go. You know, or whether they're a bit like, mm, yeah, it's not too bad. You know, you, you'll be able to tell. And I can't tell you what that looks like. You will know for your cat. You know, we, I, I can read Leo, as I'm sure you can read your own cats very, very well he would go to the salmon and sniff it and literally walk away. And we tried it, tried and tried, tried two plate methods, same plate method, not having any of it, you know, so we give it up. Um, so try to be present with them when they're eating so you can get an idea whether it's a hard no or whether it's like, yeah, I don't like change, but I'll go with it. And then you can persevere with it. Um, there are brilliantly, <laughs> loads of raw food brands that are popping up so when we fed pickle um raw food god eons ago perform was the only raw food brand around now i'll be honest it is the the um it's premium it's in terms of price in terms of quality it's very expensive it's it's the most expensive of all the raw foods that i found um so bear that in mind you might need to consider your budget when you're switching to raw um i don't like the fact that it comes in sachets where they're not recyclable they're plastic um you can get tubs you can get bigger tubs but bear in mind we've only got one cat that's more for like a breeder you know um but it might work better for you if you've got more than one cat um nutriment comes in little uh i think it's 200 grams 250 grams um containers small little plastic tubs so you can wash them and you can recycle them and they've got a card cardboard sleeve on it which you can obviously put in your recycling so we actually feed leo from the last couple of months we feed him more nutriment than perform because i like the fact that we can recycle the the waste products um but yet they haven't got as many proteins in their range so that's why we also still feed perform because they've got i mean they've got quail this is their premium range in their uh, normal range they've got rabbit they've got chicken they've got uh, quail venison um ox heart they've recently brought out goat which we haven't tried um but you know have a think about the proteins that your cat likes try to mirror those think about what's important to you you know recycling is important to me ultimately i'd love to know i'd love to see that you know both of them turn up to me and i can recycle all of the packaging sadly i can't because both of them are frozen and they come in a polystyrene container they said it's a nutriment frozen yes i fed my dog that but it was frozen indeed so nutriment and performer both frozen um in sachets and the in the little containers and you've got a defroster before you feed it so we would take a sachet out every day for Leo for the perform uh, and nutriment. When we've got one little bit left, we then take another one out to defrost it overnight and ready for the next day. So when it comes to looking at a brand, like I said, it's brilliant because the raw food movement is has, has hugely taken off. Um, and I, I mean, I, when I was looking the other day, I found one, two, uh, three, four, five, six seven eight nine raw food brands um so one note of uh word of warning i would say i wouldn't advise you use any raw products that have got yeast in them so a lot so i saw one of the brands and unfortunately i can't remember which one it was had brewer's yeast i wouldn't advise feeding a brand with yeast in um 
from my perspective, it could potentially upset the cat's uh, stomach, uh, the cat's gut biome. And because cats are carnivores, you know, you don't want to put too much yeast in their diet because sometimes it can manifest in a skin issue. Um, you know, for, for example, thrush or problems with their mouth if they're on medication. So, for example, with Leo being on um, the aerosolized inhaler, you know, there is potentially a risk of him uh um getting thrush in his mouth from it so as soon as he's had the puffer we feed him so that he's got liquid and food to cleanse it from his mouth equally i don't want to be putting more yeast in his body than is necessary because his body is potentially already using some form of inflammation let's see he is on that inhaler absolutely so you know because he's on steroids i've got to bear that in mind so again when you look at different proteins um, so I mentioned in one of the emails that we're currently on a journey to give Leo a hypoallergenic raw. Now, in my head, the only hypoallergenic cat food diet you could have was like hypoallergenic dry food from the vets. That's, that was my understanding, again, until I've educated myself recently. So I attended the uh, RFBS, so Raw Feeding Veterinary Society, uh, dot info great great website you can become a supporter which we are you, if you're a raw food brand you can become an affiliate if you're a veterinary nurse or professional you can sign up check out the rfbs they're on instagram um it's a fabulous resource if you want to have a discussion with your vet about transitioning your cat to raw food and your vet's on the fence or your vet says no point them in that direction the rfbs is a community it's a great organization and it's a community of vets who are pro raw you know they can give you information and advice about how to approach your current vet what to share with them you know a lot of vets fear it because of a bacteria risk and other issues which i'm not going to go into what i would say you know do your research so rfvs is a great website um and some of the raw food brands are becoming affiliates so they're signing up with the rfvs you know they're um they basically say, look, we, we pledge to feed raw and to help people with their cats or the, with their dogs with raw food. Um, some of the websites that I found, so for example, there's a brand called uh, Cotswold Raw. Is it Cotswold Raw? Yeah. They only uh, have raw dog food at the moment, but they are looking to develop, to develop a cat range. Um, can you feed raw dog food to cats? I would say it depends what's in it. You know, ultimately, nutriment, for example, if you look on their packets, it's got a picture of a cat and a dog. So as long as it's covered the 80-10-10, you should be fine. Um, have a look and make sure that there are no added vegetables, because with a lot of the dog foods, they're adding peas and carrots and blueberries and things into the raw food for dogs. Now, cats, like I said at the beginning, they don't need that. Cats don't need the extra vegetables, the extra fruits, the carbs, you know. And as much as we think, oh, you know, cranberries to help with urinary tract, it's not the same for cats. That, that's, that's brands trying to an anthropomorphize, you know, put the human take on animal um, products. So if you're going to feed a dog brand, just make sure that it hasn't got extra vegetables in it or um, fruits and steer away from anything that's got extra yeast. So the one thing that I love about Perform is exactly what it says in the tin. You know, the ingredients are, so for example, you know, rabbit, ox heart and uh, bone. You know, that's one of the sachets that we feed. That's all it is. Whereas Nutriment does have a couple of additives in it. So it's got spirulina in it. It's got, I think it's salmon oil. So when you're feeding raw, try to get, you have a read of the ingredients, get those that have got as limited ingredients as possible. You know, when you're looking at feeding raw food, 80, 10, 10, meat, bone, uh, meat, bone and offal. So, one other thing to be mindful of is omegas. So, you know, you'd like to think with a balanced diet that your cat is getting everything it needs because don't forget, meat isn't just protein. There are other vitamins and minerals in meat as well. But the reason that we talk about giving um, bone and offal is to supplement that and to top those vitamins up. So there are two great ways to get omegas into your cat. So one is uh, krill oil. Um, again, you could potentially put a quarter of a teaspoon in with food if they'll eat it. Um, the way that we do it in our house is that, uh, I was going to say Rob, that's my husband, that's not right. Leo has um, uh, tin sardines in olive oil. So olive oil, not sunflower oil, because sunflower oil can be quite processed. 
So we have a tin, you know, like for Mazda, you know, we're, we're not fancy. It's, it's not like Waitrose. You know, we have a tin of sardines in olive oil. And you might have seen my posts on Instagram or Facebook. Um, he gets one a week, the whole, the whole sardine. So we put it down. I tried it the other day. Usually I mash it up. But because I'm trying to bring in um, meat on the bone for him, because he's got ground bone in his raw, but I'm trying to get him onto meaty treats, uh, bony treats to help with the plaque buildup from when he was um, at the rescue and he's got tartar on the back of his teeth. I'm trying to um, make his food a bit bulkier. So the other day I put down the whole sardine. Oh my God. I went to the kitchen to wash the fork, came back and it's gone. The whole thing was gone. I mean, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. So this is what I said at the beginning about, you know, it's not astrology, uh, it's not a science. You know, if you look online, there'll be so many different oils that are aimed at cats and what have you. You don't need to be that fancy about it. It can be really simple, straightforward and basic. You know, let, let's just go back to basics with cats and raw food. So those are the brands that I would recommend. I am not affiliated with them. It's only because as a cat mum, that's what we feed. Perform worked for Pickle. Perform and Nutriment works for Leo. I am going to be trying a new brand in a couple of months called Nurture Them Naturally because they have um, like, like uh, single chunks and they do duck uh, and venison. So I mentioned before about the hypoallergenic diet. I joined a conference that the RFVS did and I mentioned about Leo with asthma and one of the, in fact, it was, I think it was the president or whatever the equivalent is that they call her, uh, who's a vet said, you know, feed him hypoallergenic raw. And I was like, what on earth would that be? And basically it's proteins that aren't very heavily processed. So no beef, no chicken, um, uh, no pork. So basically it's the, it's the really expensive ones. You know, it's duck, it's venison, it's rabbit. Um, it's the it's the, the the game rather than poultry. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Leslie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So he he's better with game rather than poultry, and it's really interesting because we had a beef nutriment left over, and when we fed it him, obviously over a couple of days, he actually started coughing. And we hadn't had coughing for a very, very long time because his asthma is very, again, very well maintained. <clears throat> um, I, I just thought it was really interesting. You know, it was a different protein for him. It caused a bit of inflammation in his body, obviously. And he reacted with his asthma. Um, so the reason that we're going to look to try and nurture them naturally is because they have duck, um, which I don't think Perform has. Um, Perform also had pigeon chunks, but they were out of that last time we tried, uh, last time we made an order. <clears throat> so... We're almost at time. If anybody's got any last minute questions, pop them in the chat now. So, like I said, we feed perform nutriment. Highly recommend the RFVS Royal. Uh, I keep saying Royal. It's Raw Feeding Veterinary Society. Some of the other brands that I found online: um, Hug H U G, uh, Bella and Duke, Nurture Them Naturally. We've mentioned Ruddy Food I or Rudy Food R U D Y F O O D. Uh, True Carnivores, Cotswold Raw, uh, and Catkin. So like I said, Catkin recently, I know a colleague of mine mentioned that they've changed their recipe. So um, they have now recently taken out the peas and things that were in their brand, in their food, and it's just meat. So do your research, have a look and make sure that the additives or anything that's extra in the, in the pre-made raw is what needs to be there. You know, you don't need added fruits and vegetables to feed your cat. You really, really don't. Uh, let's see, when would you start a kitten on raw, on raw food? Amanda says, cat can is gently steamed. That's a good point, Amanda. It is the picture that someone sent me, it looked raw, but you're right, it is um, gently steamed. Yes, cat is very popular at the moment and I'm really glad to see that they've changed their recipe. Uh, let's see, when would you start to feed a kitten on raw food? As soon as they're weaned, as, as soon as they're weaned so you know four four weeks I'd say four or five weeks depends when they're starting to come off milk um you'll be you'll be surprised if you go to the perform website or perform social media they've got kit videos and things of kittens and they absolutely love it because it's as nature intended right they, they don't need to transition they don't know anything else they that that is what their body needs and that's exactly what you know what they go for what they thrive on uh so as I mentioned RFVS 
um, there's two accounts on Instagram that I would recommend. So one is called Raw Pets Rule and the other is called Feed Real Movement. So both of those, be warned, they show pictures of a raw bowl of food. So 90% of the time it's for dogs, <clears throat> as is everything in this world, sadly. Uh, five, 10% of the time it's for cats. So don't think that everything you can give a dog, you can give a cat. That's not the same as it is with raw, like with anything, they're not small dogs, okay? So just bear that in mind, but they are really great in terms of, you know, giving you inspiration for things to add. They, they like we did when we did the raw food, um, the raw treats a couple of weeks ago, they talk about eggs that being safe and giving the shell and, you know, it's really great in terms of, you know, just to kind of advance your learning. And there's a couple of books. So this one, I'm partway through. I don't know if that's backwards, called Feeding Dogs by Dr. Connor Brady. Um, again, all about dogs, but he does talk about carnivals in there, you know, so some of it is applicable to cats. So it's, it's very thick, it's very thick, and it's very much, um, it's, it's the science behind it all. It's science-based. So he talks about carbohydrates and why they're bad, you know, for carnivals, which obviously is applicable to cats. I mean, at the end of this chapter about car carbohydrates, two, three, there's nine pages of references. You know, that's how many studies and things he's covered. Um, he talks about wheat gluten, vitamins and minerals, you know, arguments for raw feeding, there's loads. So Feeding Dogs by Dr. Connor Brady. And then two other books that Dr. Nick uh, Thompson recommended, who's the holistic vet on Instagram. Spoon Fed by Tim Spector and Deep Nutrition by Catherine Shanahan. I've not read either of those. Um, I don't know if they're aimed at animals or humans, but, you know, uh, references that uh, Dr. Nick's mentioned, so I'm sure that'll be good. Okay, I'm just going to wrap it up now. Leslie said he does webinars too with two other vets. He does. Um, he hosts it with Dr. Connor Brady, who wrote the book, and also with, um, oh, what's his name? I can see he's got glasses someone else who's a, who's part of the RFVS, um, they're on Facebook. So if you go to Dr. Nick Thompson or the Holistic Vet, you'll find he supports kind of other avenues to talk about raw feeding. Nick is very much about dogs. Um, and, and I understand that, but you know, the more we ask about cats, the more that resources will be put out there and you know, we can get extra support because I think it's something that we need to show that we need help you know, with this topic for them to, to do more with it. So Marion says, okay, this is, this is the last question. Uh, for now, I'm feeding wet at once, high quality and protein and dry, always available. She's been a bit snobbish with the wet food lately. Would you suggest to remove the dry food in the wet, in, remove the dry food in the day and wet and try wet or dry together a couple of times a day? Okay, so Marion, um, I always advise to do time and feeding rather than free feeding because it's easier to maintain, you know, with diet, uh, with um, weight and also cats generally will eat little and often. Um, so I would highly recommend that you pick up the dry food and don't have it down all the time. Again, it's another opportunity for bacteria to breed when it's open to the elements and down all the time. So I would put a little bit down as an, you know, three or four times a day. I would advocate three or four meals a day. Um, and uh, when you say a bit snobbish with the wet food, there's probably something going on. So either she's not keen on the brand, she's still transitioning from dry to wet. So again, just be patient. And uh, I would potentially, for a, say a week, put the dry food down in the morning and pick it up. So you've got to get her used to, to removing the free feeding. And then uh, in a week or so, I would say, you know, put the wet and dry Remember we talked about the two plate method down next to each other. Again, leave it down for half an hour or an hour, pick it up and, and put it away because you're trying to get her into the routine of it. Um, if you can avoid mixing the two, I would. But again, if you need to, to transition them, mix a little bit of dry with the wet. Um, and like I said, if she doesn't eat it, pick it up and put it in the bin. Don't ever put it back down um, because it, when you mix the two together and you give it moisture, anything with dry food, the bacteria, and also that there's, there's mites and all sorts in it, you know, it's just going to breed and be a really gross place. So the cat definitely won't eat it. Um, so yeah, try to, to get her in the routine of uh, time and feeding, add the wet and dry if you can together. Um, ultimately we, you know, 
would reduce the amount of dry again really really gradually um and uh you know if she's not interested in a particular wet maybe try a different flavor keep to the same brand so it's the same texture but maybe try a different flavor and again just be patient I really hope you've enjoyed it, everyone. We're slightly over time. Uh, thank you again to everybody that joined us here live today. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed it. The next luncheon then we've got is next week, and that's the last one for a while, which is gonna be the top 10 remedies. So from my book, The Aromatic Cat, I'm going to, we've got 40 botanical profiles, but what I'm gonna share with you is basically my favorite top 10. The top 10 that we've always got here in the home. Um, obviously, you know, I've got oodles of supplies anyway, but um, yeah, I'll share with you the top 10 that is great to have, you know, in your starter kit um, to help your cat and uh, enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. And I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Take care, bye for now.